Yes, it's Thursday, and so of course we we're in the kitchen with Chef Bob Harrisal from Farm Fresh, and uh, we're we're talking steaks, but tuna steaks. Tuna steaks, wild caught tuna steaks. Mm -hmm. Something I want to uh, just kind of feature that we have at Farm Fresh. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we're a destination point for a lot of our seafood that we have. But these are our tuna steaks, wild caught, like I said, not farm raised. So, mm -hmm. and but I we're see a do, lot of greens. Yeah, we're going to do match it up with a green gazpacho sauce. Nice. Okay, it's going to be a little twist on our, what you know as gazpacho, but we're going to do that. We also do have uh, saffron rice, mm -hmm. rice pilaf, and then we'll finish off with some asparagus and uh, fresh asparagus with uh, red peppers. All right, going gourmet today. We'll get started in just a moment. And you'll do it. <laughs> All righty, time now for our Hampton Roadshow Pet Pal of the Week. This is Diva, a fearless little kitty from the Norfolk Animal Care Center. We're told she's quite adventurous and playful, and she gets along with other cats and dogs. If you'd like to make Diva, a part of your family. Get in touch with the folks at the Norfolk Animal Care Center at 441-5505 or visit norfolk.gov slash NACC. Look at Diva, cute little kitty. All right, don't go away. We're just getting started on the Hampton Road Show this morning. We're talking with the folks from McDonald's of Hampton Roads and the Virginia Wounded Warrior Program about a special way you can salute our veterans all month long. And it's time now for today's Pop Quiz Trivia. Get your thinking caps on. Today's winner will receive a $25 Wendy's gift card. Here is the question. The lowest layer of the Earth's atmosphere is called the thermosphere, the stratosphere, or the troposphere. If you know the answer, log on to the HamptonRoadShow.com and pop, uh, click on the Pop Quiz button on our homepage to enter. Good luck, everybody. We're back now in the kitchen. We've got Chef Bob Hirasawa from Farm Fresh here today, and he's making pan seared tuna steaks with green gazpacho sauce. And we're about to get started. First, you want to talk a little bit about those tuna steaks. Yeah, we're going to kind of go backwards. We're going to start with the tuna steaks. Tuna steaks are, like, again, I said wild caught. So, you know, you know they're, they're good um, for you and good fresh and all that good stuff. But anyway, we're going to, we, key to cooking tuna 
Don't overcook it. Don't overcook I, it. I, I, I strongly suggest that you cook it to about a medium rare. Mm -hmm. uh, some people like medium. I wouldn't do it any more than that. It, because when it does, it ends up drying out and gets real kind of dry and mealy. Okay. You don't want to do that. So we're going to be cooking that in our second segment. Second, right, right now, we're going to work on the yep. other stuff on the, other the side. Stuff. We're going to do a start with a saffron um, uh, rice, rice pilaf. We're going to add a little bit of oil in this pan. So is that some olive oil? A little olive oil. We're going to add some diced onions. Diced onions. onions for us. Okay, and here's the saffron we're talking about. Saffron. Fast saffron. Mm -hmm. It's a herb that is grown in uh, basically in the, in the Middle, Middle East. Mm -hmm. um, and it's expensive, you were saying. Oh, look at the smell. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> but we're going we're gonna to go ahead. So and, it's yeah. not saffron rice, but it's rice with saffron. Saffron rice. And then we're adding a, we're adding a, a good rice there, and then mm -hmm. we're going to add, we mix that in. We're just going to get that. Using some broth. This is some broth. Yeah, we want to do some something that's going to be kind of uh, give us some flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, water doesn't do it. How much should I pour in? All of that. All of it. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, yeah. chicken broth is going to give it a little extra right. flavor. Add, is going to give I know, flavor. I know, I just cook my rice at home in yeah. water. And, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and then you know you want some flavor to it. They want to, you know, my mm -hmm. my water at home doesn't get flavor. So. Right, my water doesn't either. Yeah. But I'm just but, saying, so I've got to get a little more fancy and get some chicken broth. But it's priced like it is, my, right? With my rice. But we have uh, the saffron. Is we're talking about. It takes fourteen thousand. Threads, threads to make one ounce. And how, okay. how expensive is and that stuff? Basically, this this is right now, this uh, retail, this is about uh, $30 a gram. Okay, okay. and so, so this little amount that we're putting in is, is probably is, like... This is about a sixth of a gram. Wow. Okay. And we're going to add, add that to it. What you want to do is kind of give it a little bit of a... a yeah, a little bit of a break. Little. And like what does the like saffron a, taste, it, if I'm it, unfamiliar? It has, well, th this has kind of a unique taste to it and also t uh, makes everything kind of be a... a um, it's not a strong taste, but it's mm -hmm. a unique taste to it, and it also kind of uh, brings a real bright yellow to the flavor. Okay, so can okay. you give it that color? Yeah, and then we're going to jump right over here and do all the All right, so let the our sauce. rice cook because right. that's going to take a little bit. Okay, yeah, and we're going to do a gazpacho. This gazpacho. is all a blend of gazpacho sauce. It's basically going to follow the, the uh, moves of what we do. Mm -hmm. You want to jump over here and let all you right. do them. We're going to add first. Go ahead and do some in a, in a processor. We'll go ahead and add the uh, uh, cilantro. The cilantro. Yeah. All right. Add that in there. Can you get that? Yeah, I don't want it to fall all over the counter. Yeah. All right. That's good TV. There you go. <laughs> okay, now we're going to add some cucumber. Cucumber. Add it in there. Just kind of. So, this green gazpacho, where's your uh, inspiration for it? Well, basically, it is, it is, is using Looks gazpacho healthy. sauce, and rather than just do it as a soup, which mm -hmm. is a cold soup, right. we're using it as a sauce here. Mm -hmm. We're going to add some peppers here. Peppers. Yeah. Okay. And then that's, those are serrano peppers, a little green onion. Mm -hmm. How about a little bit of garlic? Garlic always okay. makes it better. And then we're going to do a little bit of, uh, okay. All the garlic? Uh, all not? the garlic? Why right. not? You like garlic, right? It makes it taste better. Okay. And then we're going to add oh, about half of that, okay? And this is? That's a V8 juice. V8. And like what you do for, Oops. there you go. That's all good. Right. Okay, now we're just going to blend this. Okay, okay. we're going to put the top on. I always struggle with this one. Turn it. Turn it. There you oh, go. Okay. There you go. Now turn it there. There you go. There we go. Okay. Oh, all the way? It. All the way. No, I always have problems with it. Okay. Okay, now turn that dial. Two, one. Uh, Are way. we not plugged in? No, we're plugged in. There, there we go. go. Okay. How far down are you going to blend it? Yeah. Um, good. See, we don't want it to be fully, fully uh, uh, liquefied, but mm -hmm. we want to have a little chunkiness to it. And that's, okay. that sauce is pretty much done right So there. this is going to be our sauce for the tuna steaks. Right. And we're gonna, and just the uh, the rice that we're doing is we're bringing it to a boil. We're gonna let it simmer down and then simmer down. Right. All right, and then, and then uh, all right. So it, great. So farm yeah. fresh mm -hmm. right now. Um, Featuring the, the tuna steaks. The tuna steaks are was something we always have. We have that, and we also have featuring uh, fresh uh, swordfish steaks. Mm -hmm. But you know, we always have the salmon. We and you were talking about it's the wild caught. So this mm -hmm. is like a, kind of a newer line for Farm Fresh that you. You're well, it's it's one that we wanted to bring forward and just said we've always had it, but mm -hmm. we wanted to just, uh, let people know that we do have this and it's, and it's available all year round for us. Right. So okay. we're going to work on that the next segment, and then yep. we also have some asparagus. Asparagus. And asparagus gonna where are those those going to yeah. go? I know you always have a lot going. Hey, on. Hey, we just so. want to we just want to round out the whole meal here. I'm trying to picture it. So where are we going with that? Well, we're just going to do a quick saute of that. We're going to uh, deglaze it with a little balsamic vinegar and mm -hmm. you know, put that on the plate for you. And then, of course, you know that Chef Bob brought dessert, but yeah, we're not going to reveal it just yet. But it's really good dessert, and everybody in the studio has been like, that's mine. They're that's, all that's putting right. claim on it they already. They all are. I think you got to fight you fight your way through and, and, and really fight your way through Chris to get to that one. All right, so we're letting our rice okay. with the saffron yep. threads mm -hmm. cook up. We've got our gazpacho Gaspacho. ready to go, mm -hmm. and we'll be working on the steaks when we come back. All month long, McDonald's restaurants of Hampton Roads in Northeast North Carolina are working to help the Virginia Wounded Warrior Program. Here now to tell us more, our McDonald's owner and operator, Paul Smith, 
and Kim Tarshish, Regional Coordinator for the Virginia Wounded Warriors Program. Welcome, Paul and Kim. Thank you for being here on the Hampton Road Hi, Show. Uh, Kim, let's begin with you. Tell us about the Virginia Wounded Warrior Program. The program was started in 2008 um, by the state of Virginia um, to ensure that comprehensive services are available to our veterans. Um, we want to make sure that folks that serve through the five branches of service, uh, as well as those um, in the National Guard and the reservists uh, that are not um, on federal orders, receive the programs and services that uh, are entitled to them based on their services. Uh, Paul, how is McDonald's of Hampton Roads uh, involved and why is this important to you and all the other owners? Well, one, uh, Chris, all the McDonald's franchisees in, in the Hampton Roads area are you know, really in concerned about the military. Uh, we have 97 restaurants in Tidewater, uh, 17 franchisees, as I said. And in May, we, we had a, a fundraiser for the Virginia Wounded Warrior Program and we raised $18,555. That's tremendous. And you did it a very simple way, which people can do this month. Tell them how they can do that. We did. We had a portion of every Big Mac extra value meal and quarter pound of cheese extra value meal that we uh, tabulated and donated to the Virginia Wounded Warrior Program. And that'll be the same program this year uh, in, in November. The entire month of November, if you, if you purchase those meals, money will go. And, and that's really important, Kim. Where does that money go? It really is. Um, as a state program, we don't solicit donations. Um, but we really are very proud to say that 100% of the funds that are donated go directly back to veterans. And although we are a resource-rich area for veterans, there are still lots of services that are needed. Um, there are veterans that just fall beneath the cracks and need help. Um, and so to be able to provide that, um, those services are just, it's, it's invaluable. So we really do appreciate the partnership that McDonald's has uh, has, has undertaken with us. Yeah, and Paul, we've been uh, saluting our veterans all week long here on the Hampton Road Show, and this is a simple way to give back to everyone can participate in. It is, and it's, it's so simple. All of a person has to do is come into one of the local McDonald's in the greater Hampton Roads area, buy a Big Mac extra value meal for lunch or dinner, or a quarter pound of wheat cheese, extra value meal for lunch or dinner, mm -hmm. and a portion of that, as I said, goes to the Virginia Wounded Warrior Program. And you, you can't have any trouble finding one either. There's 97 of them in this area. That's right. There's, and uh, go ahead, Kim. Uh, one more appeal to everyone who can help out. Uh, the uh, the homeless um, population in this area is mm -hmm. really very disturbing, um, and that one in five homeless in the Greater Hampton Roads area is a veteran. Um, so a lot of these funds are going to be able to take care of a very vulnerable po vulnerable population. Um, and I think that's really important to our community. And I know, Paul, it's important to you. You can thank the vets out there as well, right? Absolutely. We, we salute them every day. And you can also make a difference. Once again, support local disabled veterans by purchasing a Big Mac uh, extra value meal along with a quarter pounder with cheese extra value meal. Help support the Virginia Wounded Warriors program at any McDonald's in Hampton Roads and Northeast, Northeast North Carolina throughout the month of November. Paul and Kim, thank you for being here and thanks for the work that you do. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. It's time now to check in with the Buzz Center. And this morning, we're talking about a local topic that is definitely uh, drawing some controversy on both sides. It's about a teenager in Gloucester that identifies as a transgender, uh, born, born female, identifies as a boy, fighting for the right to use what he considers the correct bathroom at school. And so, you know, people have a lot of strong feelings about this. And as a teen and, uh, uh, you know, going to high school, it can be very tough. Uh, you know, students might not necessarily be accepting. Yeah, uh, LeVar says she can identify as a boy all she wants, but why must everyone else go along with it? It is genetic, scientific fact that he is actually a sheep. Well, I mean, he identifies as a he, okay? Let's just get that straight. Gavin, she Gavin, oh, okay. I'm just saying, this is just from my perspective. Gavin knows that he's a he and identifies as a he. So he wants to use a male bathroom. Um, Jacqueline says it shouldn't be left up to the child. It is his body. Leave him alone for crying out loud. Um, it's I, a slippery slope. That's what Pamela says. I, I think yeah. if this student still has the anatomy of a female, they should use female bathroom. There's a safety factor at play here, too. People can be cruel, especially when they don't understand another's choices or beliefs. I would be afraid of being harmed. Yeah, like I said, there's a lot of misconceptions in this uh, about transgender because most people don't know about it. And the one thing is that they do know what gender they are. Right. So this should be up to them. But then again, we were talking about how teens can be r cruel and ruthless mm -hmm. and sometimes not understanding. Right. So they need to protect it, Gavin. I mean, they definitely do. Kevin says sex and gender are two different things. 
And um, Erica says, I understand what you're saying, but kids these days are awful. And I think that that's what makes it a little tougher of a subject is that, you know, given the age and, and maybe possible immaturity of some of the people at the school that might not be okay with it, be comfortable. I don't know, as a female, if, if I had um, someone who identified as a girl but was really a boy coming to use a female bathroom, I don't, I don't know, I might feel a little bit uncomfortable. It's an odd topic, it's, it's, um, but it's like we said, there are, there are over a million people in the country who identify as trans transgender, and uh, it can't be an easy thing to walk through life like that, so we got to try to help them out the best right, we can. Right, right. Might be a little different for kids, though. Right. I don't know what the best answer is. All It'll right. be up to the school board to decide. Right, good luck with that. It's coming. That's right. We're talking about the Bodacious Bazaar coming to the Hampton Roads Convention Center, and we'll be there tomorrow to kick it off. Aubrey and myself will be there from 1 to 4 tomorrow. Come see us and get started on your holiday shopping. It's an awesome event. Okay, coming up in this week's I Am Hampton Roads, a man who uses his own life story of being disabled by polio, growing up in poverty and immigrating to America to inspire others that anything is possible. And don't forget our pop quiz. Today's winner will receive a $25 Wendy's gift card. Just log on to thehamptonroadshow.com and click on the pop, pop quiz button on the top right corner screen to enter. Good luck, everybody. Our live audience today is from Pajama Jams for Youth, and they're here to tell us more about what they do and their annual pajama drive called PJs for the Holidays. This is Pajama Jams founder, Erica Tucker. She's here to tell us more. So, Erica, Pajama Jams, tell me about it. Well, um, Pajama Jams is a pajama drive that we started to help children in need. Uh, mm -hmm. My family and I started a community service project mm -hmm. um, to teach our children to be more appreciative of what we have. And why pajama? Um, well, on Christmas Eve, my kids are always allowed to open one gift, and it's always pajamas. And one year they complain, like, oh, I can't believe it's pajamas again. So I just turned it into a lesson um, for them. Mm -hmm. And so you do this pajama drive. How does it work? Uh, well, individuals or uh, groups can go to the website and take the pajama pledge, and they can pledge to collect at least 10 pair of pajamas. And they don't have to buy all the pajamas. They can ask their friends and family members and neighbors and church get their kids involved maybe mm -hmm. ask their soccer team or the girl scouts to help them collect as well and then after you've collected all the pajamas then you can drop the pajamas off at one of our many drop-off locations all right so what kind of pajamas are we talking about i know you guys brought a bunch in are these examples these are examples we are looking for new pajamas for boys and girls sizes 5t 
to adult extra large. Mm -hmm. um, just warm, fuzzy pajamas. We're going to deliver them in time for Christmas. And how long have you been doing this? This is our sixth annual drive. And every year are you getting more and more pajamas? Every year we're getting more and more pajamas. Last year we collected 1,200 pair of pajamas and we donated them to the 13 Boys and Girls Clubs of Southeastern Virginia and we filled 700 Angel Tree, Salvation Army Angel Tree boxes and donated to Betty F. Williams Elementary School. And this year we have lots of wonderful new um, sponsors as well, and some of them are with us. We have the Samaritan House, Four Kids, the Space Above Yoga, and um, Massage Envy, and um, we're real excited for the community support. So these are new pajamas that you're, you're accepting? Only new pajamas, mm -hmm. yes. Well, I think it's great because you think, you know, uh, donating clothes, but you don't really think pajamas, and it's nice, I guess, for the kids to have a separate set of pajamas to get into. Absolutely. There's some children that don't have pajamas. They go to school and they go to bed in their school clothes, and uh, we just thought we'd like to share our tradition of having a nice pair of warm pajamas on Christmas Eve. Right. And if they just want to donate money, um, can they do that as well? Absolutely. You can go to the website and um, donate on the website, and also we have T-shirts and and hoodies that you can purchase that will help um, oh, okay. as well. So there's other ways to get involved. Absolutely. All right, so great. Thanks for being here. Look at these fun pajamas. Hold those up one more time so we can see them. Pajama ja Jams, PJs for the holidays. For more information and to donate, visit pajamajams.org or call 240-344-8929. You can also find them on Facebook at Donate Pajamas. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Still ahead on the Hampton Road Show, attorney Paul Hernandez from Calfus and Knackman is here to tell us about two big recalls and what you need to know if you're affected. That's next on a new edition of Legal Matters. And here's another look at Diva, our Hampton Road Show Pet Pal of the Week from the Norfolk Animal Care Center. If you'd like to make Diva part of your family, get in touch with the folks at the Norfolk Animal Care Center at 441-5505 or visit norfolk.gov slash NA. DC, it's Diva. No, not at all. Chris, you know what you do. You just push the button. <laughs> we hear about product recalls all the time, but often we don't know what to do next. It's important to know that there are deadlines to keep in mind if you end up with a defective product. 
here now to tell us about two big ones is attorney Paul Hernandez from Calphis and Natman. Paul, welcome back to the Hampton Roadshow. I know you've got some points you want to get across. Get right to it. Right. Well, see, right, right now there's two claims that are going on right now that you need to make uh, a claim before the end of the year. Now, the first one is the GM ignition recall. If you were injured as a result of that, you need to make the claim. If you want to belong to the settlement fund, you need to make that claim before December 31st. And the second one is a, is a medical device, which is the uh, striker hip. Now, there's a mm -hmm. specific hip. They make all different types of hip. This is the ABG2 and the Rejuvenate. Uh, wonderful products, however, they became defective and they are, they are willing to, to, to resolve these claims if you had another, another if, if you had revision surgery before November of this year. Okay, talk about, uh, let's just say somebody has a GM product out there that might have uh, had um, an accident or complication. What can they expect and what kind of problems are you seeing? Yeah, well, so here's the deal. Here's what happened. They had a defective ignition switch, and what happened would be when you'd be driving down the street, the ignition would go into the accessory position, you'd lose your power steering, you'd lose your power brakes, and it, you would more likely than not crash your vehicle, and then the airbags would not even go off. So, what happens? You may have a property damage claim. More likely than not, you may have an injury claim. Now, Chris, this is very interesting. For several years, we would get calls about these accidents. We had no idea the cause of it until now. The big problem was GM knew about it the whole entire time. Right. So, if you have a situation like that, a family member, yourself, were injured as a result of one of the cars on the list, and it is on our website, then you should call an uh, experienced personal injury attorney to advise you on this. It's a very rough road. It's uh, not advisable to go on your own. But there's not much time left, though. You have to do it by the end of the year. You have to, if you want to belong to the GM compensation fund, you have to do. You have to make your claim before December 31st. And what kind of a kickback are people finding with the defective striker hip replacement, uh, that one that you mentioned? Yeah, the, the ABG2 and the Rejuvenate. Well, interesting product. Great design. The mm -hmm. problem is once it got into the body, it was susceptible to loosening and or corrosion where metal products would actually be lodged into your into your body. Uh, the worst part about that is it makes the doctors who did this, who did a wonderful job, makes them look bad right. because it was a bad result. And it's not the doctor's fault, but it's the actual product itself. So if you had this d device, and you will know because your doctor will tell you, and you had revision surgery, had to get it fixed before November of 2014, you need to contact an experienced personal injury attorney right now to tell you your rights involved in that. Okay, once again, the deadline for that is December 14th. So this is very time sensitive, and this is the problem. A lot of people don't take advantage of the the time nature of Here's, this. And that's why we're here. That's why we're trying to educate the public on it. Mm -hmm. We do it on our website, we advertise, but as, as many times as we could educate the public, it's important because once it's gone, you will not be able to belong to that uh, settlement fund. Whenever uh, major companies do have recalls, what is your advice to people? Immediately call an attorney. We're experiencing this. We mm -hmm. follow this. This is what we do every day. We're, we're on the cutting edge of all these different types of recalls and whether you can get your car fixed, your hip fixed, or whatever it is. So that, you need to call somebody who knows what they're doing. And it's not just for recalls, other things as well. I mean, Abs you guys cover the gamut. Abs absolutely. All right, once again, Calphus and Nackman. You can find out more at legalmatters.calphusnackman.com. Give them a call on the Hurt Line, 1-800-HURT-LINE, and download the Calphus and Nackman iPhone app. You never know when you'll need it. Once again, if you uh, are, are, think you might be helped by this, get in touch with Paul or one of the attorneys there at Calphus and Nackman. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Chris. Just ahead in this week's edition of I Am Hampton Roads, Dr. Gopal Kanan is a professor at Regent University who aims to inspire others to be great by sharing his personal tale of faith and not letting his disability ever hold him back. And we'll check in with Chef Bob Hirasaw from Farm Fresh to see how he's doing on his pan-seared tuna.
are back now in the kitchen. We've got Chef Bob Harasawa from Farm Fresh here today. And we're working on some pan-seared tuna steaks. We're actually going to get to working on those. And yep. we've already done our green gazpacho sauce. And we've mm -hmm. worked on our rice with the saffron. So where are we starting right now? Um, we've got the steaks, the, the um, featured item today. Right, and you kind of um, lightly season them I lightly already. season them with a little bit of uh, kosher salt and with some uh, ancho chili seasoning. Ancho chili seasoning. And we're going to go ahead and quickly pan sear these. Like I said, we don't want to overdo them. Right, so how long does it take to get, you know, to, if you get the, everything warmed up nicely? Yeah, probably about a minute on each side. Oh, that's it? Yeah, and that's what, yeah. Because you don't want to overdo it. Right. Take that advice from Bob. Absolutely. You don't want to overdo it. What it's happens because it gets kind of tough? It gets kind of tough, kind of dry, kind of mm -hmm. gets stuck in your mouth. And you just season the one side. I did there because I'm going to let you season the other. Oh, I get to season the other side. Yeah. So what, add some salt? Add some little salt and a little bit of ancho sauce there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to start on those. Uh, there okay. you go. Sprinkle that on. So is this, is this ancho chili, is it, is it pretty spicy? It can be if you put too much on it. I guess depending there. on yeah. <laughs> yeah. spice to taste. It should. Like right. All right, yeah, these are grilling up real quick. Okay, so we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to let you go ahead and do the... Uh, um, Where do they go? What are they, what's next? Asparagus. Asparagus, okay. all right. We're so going to go ahead. Gonna... Yeah, let's go ahead and just put it in the pan here. We're are gonna we going to put any... Uh, okay, not yet. Go ahead and... Yeah, we're going to do the... That's little bit of... Um, yeah, that's actually going to be uh, shallots there. Shallots. Your little green. All right, we got some garlic, garlic, of course. Okay. And going to get that just mm -hmm. going real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then go ahead and throw the asparagus in. Okay. Season with a little salt and pepper. I love I'm gonna asparagus. take these tuna steaks and that's it. Thought off quick you need to do it. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, those cooked up really nice. Yeah. So only a minute each side, that's what Bob yeah. says. Don't overdo your tuna steaks. Right. Okay. Alright. And go ahead and get that cooking up a little bit. And at what point am I gonna add the uh... You can add those now if you want. Nice red. Look at the colors. I love you know the red and the green. Not only does it look pretty, it's very healthy. Yep. And we're going to let that cook just for a second, and we're going to okay. hit it a little bit with that balsamic okay. vinegar. And I'm going to show you this sauce over here that we made earlier. Mm -hmm. It's kind it's of like, be a, a, little bit like chunky. a salsa. It is. But we're going to put that on the bottom of the plate a little bit. Okay. Okay. So we put it on down first. Put it down first. Kind of spread it out. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a little bit of our saffron rice. Mm -hmm. Put that back. Try and to get the Be careful. Color. Don't overcook the rice. We don't want it mushy. We don't want it mushy like you, we were talking earlier. Right. I'm like, okay. I don't like my rice mushy. Okay. And these steaks are just about there. I'm going to rush this one just a little bit. So how do you okay. determine? You just like to get it like browned on each side? Brown on each side and that's pretty much going to be it. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's hope this comes out good Let's work. hope. Yeah, it's good. You never could go wrong, right, Chef Bob? See? And we want that sear like that. You that's like good. the sear like that. Yeah. There we go. I'm going to put these together on the plate. Hot, hot. And then the, the last thing is going to be the, the asparagus. Mm -hmm. Let's hit a little bit of... Uh, Okay, when you say a little bit, um, when I say a little bit, a little bit? About, about three tablespoons. Three tablespoons. Okay. I don't know. I don't think I'm. My eyeball hey, is probably good. not that good, but. Okay, that's going to reduce but just I like for some a second. <laughs> yeah. Reduce just for a second, and then we're going to put that on the back side. Okay. Okay. And these these tuna sticks, we don't want to overcook them. You know, I'm always kind of light-handed with my my seasonings. I don't uh -huh. like doing too much. I'm I like less and then add more. Right. And yeah, and that's that's it. You you don't want to over season. You can't can't always take it out, but mm -hmm. you can always add to it. You're okay. exactly right. And um, so I was a little distracted there, but I want to get those off before they overcook. Mm -hmm. Look at this. I mean, we've got the and, green from the gazpacho. We've got okay. the yellow from the saffron and the rice, and then and, uh, red we, and a little more green with the asparagus. And sometimes and the it helps if we have a burner going, huh? But we're gonna put these <laughs> on the back here, and then we bring that all together. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there you go. There All you right. Go. So, what else you got going on at, at Farm Fresh right now? We've got this great pan-seared right. tuna and right. the rice and the pan veggies. And we um, always have, um, you know, a couple of things we always have going on is our food drives going on both mm -hmm. for the for people and for pets. Okay. As you see over there. And we have a lovely dessert. Kind of fits mm -hmm. in with the season, right? Yeah. So uh, go ahead and. and uh, dessert. Let's, this, let's this, one, this one comes from our great next door. It is a pumpkin spice cake. It's four layers. Uh, Look at fill that. the creams between each layer, and it's uh, made up for us. Wishing you a uh, happy holidays there. But we also have our Fresh Ideas magazine. Fresh, uh, every oh, month right. it comes out. Great fresh deals, ideas great, um, great recipes We've got recipes in there. Right. and the sales. And, and the it's sales just kind of nice to look through and get some ideas. Mm -hmm. Now that cake, people are in the studio already putting dibs on it. Yeah. Um, you said Great Next Door. It's only in the Great Next Door? Well, they, they all do it, for, but they made it special for okay, you. Okay, Chris, put that down. Put it yeah. down, Chris. Chris, Chris, <laughs> Chris. <laughs> You're gonna, but, we're going to get in a fight over that cake. No, but we could do this in, in, in any number of the stores, okay. but Great Neck was the one that did this especially right. for the Right, and so pumpkin spice, today. is that something that's maybe only during the fall season? They or? can make it any time for you if, if you all choose. Right. If, you, if you want to order one, 
give them like 24 hours and then right. they'll have it up for you. But all those pumpkin <laughs> spices are definitely popular. Okay, yeah. but don't drop the cake, guys. All right. Okay. I don't know if I trust Stephanie with it yeah. either, though. Uh, she pulled rank on it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get okay. too far. All right, so okay. this looks great. Can't wait to give it a try. And, um, very healthy, and of course, it's, you've got yeah. to finish it. It's off a quick and easy, dessert. quick and easy. Hopefully, I showed you that. That's quick and mm -hmm. easy uh, meal. It sounds a little, little fancy and all that, but hey, it's a quick one for you. Right, and it has a lot of different flavors, yeah. so I think that uh, yeah, it and? can be a hit. Yep. It will be a hit. <laughs> you can't go wrong with Chef Bob. Okay, farm fresh locations are across Hampton Roads. If you want to find the one that's closest to you, you can go online to Farm Fresh Supermarket. Dot com. As always, super job here in the kitchen. Oh. Everything is so tasty, and I can't wait. Just a few oh. more minutes till I actually get to really dig in. Well, you, you did all the work. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Okay.